G'day Ziggy D here and today I want to share with you a compilation of all the tips and tricks I've come across that can help you make your Alkaiser run smoother and more profitable. I'll start off with some more general tips and then I'll move into specific tips for each of the different zones in the popular farming run. So jumping straight into it with some general tips. Having a predefined list of the names and types of gear you plan on picking up will take the decision making out of your runs and increase your overall speed. What is actually on your list is up to you, but remember that some gear slots and types have more potential value than others, and the smaller your list is, the faster your runs are going to be. I have another video that I'll link to in the description below where I explain the items that I pick up in patch 1.0.5 and why. Always try to be moving forward and avoid backtracking as much as possible. If you find yourself kiting to stay alive, then you may need to adjust your build, gear or the monster power you're playing on. I'll cover specific ways in which you can avoid backtracking in some of the zone explanations later in this video. I mentioned earlier lowering your monster power, and it's generally a good idea if you're farming for experience and gear to do it in the lower monster powers, even if you can handle higher. The time to kill mobs scales exponentially higher as you move through the levels, and this quickly outweighs the magic find and experience bonuses. The rule of thumb for whether you should farm a higher monster power is if you spend less than 10% of your time fighting elites in your current monster power. However, even this rule can be quite subjective, and the only real way to find out the most efficient monster power for you is to work out your experience per hour on each setting. So let's move into the first two zones with the Core of Aria and the Tower of the Damned. When we start the Archiser run, we begin with the checkpoint in the Core of Aria right next to the Asmodan fight. You can get this checkpoint by starting a game on the Kill Asmodan quest and running right to the end of the core of Ariat zone. Just make sure you don't click on the door to the Asmodan fight or you won't be able to get out until you beat him. The reason why we begin with these two zones is because they both have the chance to spawn between 1 and 3 elite packs and both have a relatively low density of trash mobs. Our aim in these areas is to build up our Nephilim stacks to 5 as soon as possible to maximise our magic find and experience bonuses for the rest of the run. For this reason, you're best off skipping all but the most clustered mobs in these areas to simply find and kill the elites faster. When clearing the tower level 1, it's best to do it in a counterclockwise fashion. This is because from the south side of the circuit you can see any elite packs hiding on the stairs before you actually come to the stairs themselves. The next zone is the Ariat Crater 2. Ariat Crater 2 or AC2 has some of the best mob density you'll see in the game, and it will be a huge source of your Paragon experience. For this reason, it's a good idea to make sure that you have 5 Nephilim Valor stacks by the time you go in there. To pick up an extra stack if I'm missing one, I'll take the waypoint to the Tower of the Cursed level 1. Often an elite pack will spawn to the left of the waypoint, and after you kill it you can simply run up the stairs to start at the end of AC2. Despite being such a good zone for mob density, AC2 could have a pretty unforgiving layout. To avoid backtracking if you die or reach a dead end, then you can simply teleport back to town and enter from the opposite end. In my case, this is the AC2 waypoint itself, but if you begin there originally, then it could be the Tower of the Cursed One, and vice versa. The rule of thumb I use to decide whether I should portal or backtrack is if the backtracking will take more than 10 seconds, then I'll waypoint instead. We will use this same technique to avoid backtracking in other zones as well. There are three zones that make up the keep depths, and each one of them has some utility. However, Keeps 2 is our primary target because it has an excellent trash mob density, possibly the highest in the game. Keeps 3 has a lower mob density, but will contain a lot of elites for its size. For this reason, I'll sometimes clear Keeps 3 after the Core of Ariat and the Tower of the Dam zones if I was unlucky with the elite spawns in those areas. Don't be afraid to mix up your run a little bit like this on the fly to take advantage of these high elite spawn areas. To enter Keeps 2, simply waypoint to Keeps 1 and walk through the door. However, occasionally an elite will spawn in the room to the south of the Keeps 1 waypoint, so it's worth checking here first. Similarly to AC2, if you die or hit a large dead end in Keeps 2, then you can avoid backtracking by taking the opposite waypoint to what you began with. This means either taking the Keep Depths 1 waypoint or the Keep Depths 3 waypoint and working backwards. The final two zones are the Fields of Slaughter and Rackus Crossing, and whether you choose to clear Rackus or not will influence the way that you run the fields. Rackus Crossing is not really recommended for players trying to keep up Archon or Wrath of the Berserker, as there can be stretches of no mobs that can cause you to drop these buffs. If this applies to you, then the best way to clear the fields is simply with a big loop starting and ending at the waypoint. Make sure to poke into the center briefly, as leaks will often spawn there as well. If you do plan on clearing Rackus, however, then a sideways S shape is the most efficient way to clear the fields. Head right from the waypoint, 
and double back through the middle in a shape here shown on the map. This will take you through all of the mob dance areas and will have you finish the zone at the beginning of Rackus without requiring a waypoint. As a final bonus tip for the end of your runs, you can speed up the time it takes to ID rares by right clicking the next rare when the current one's progress bar is around 80%. This will remove the waiting time between IDs. It's not a huge deal, but you don't really have anything else to do while you're IDing anyway. Hopefully you guys found at least a few of these tips helpful and can apply them to your next Alcazar run. If you have any of your own tips which I didn't cover here, then please feel free to share them in the comments below. Remember, above all else, do what you find fun in Diablo 3. If that isn't being super hardcore efficient, then just do whatever you like. It's better to be having fun playing the game than to not be playing it out of paranoia that you aren't being efficient enough. That's it for today, I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.